I love a good river town. I think most people have dreams about owning a house on a river. You get to swim, fish, canoe, and sit on your dock with a drink while watching the sun go down. That sounds really good right now. You just sit there on your own dock, watch the sun go down, drink a couple Red Bulls. 20 minutes later, you're all jittery and start talking to your ducks. Good times. Maybe just a cup of tea. I don't want my neighbors thinking I'm uh, off my medication or something. Today, we are looking at the 10 best river towns in the United States, including one that has a history of pirates and a creature from the swamp that stalks the woods and the nearby wetlands. Are these the best river towns? Maybe, maybe not. That's all up for interpretation. These are the best I've ever visited. I would love to hear what your favorites are in the comment section below. Maybe we could do another video. Maybe I'll include you in that video. In this video, we look at these cities and we look at the real estate prices because that's what a lot of you are here for. You wanna learn something and you wanna know if you can afford it. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Helen, Georgia. You know, it's really hard to find a bad looking town in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I love this part of the country and this is a very unusual town besides being beautiful. Helen was platted in 1912, and it was named after the daughter of a lumber official. The town was incorporated a year later in 1913. Years later, after the logging boom was over, the town sort of fell on hard times. It was definitely on the decline, and the city resurrected itself by becoming a replica of a Bavarian Alpine town in the Appalachians, instead of the Alps. <laughs> like they're putting the town together. I wonder if anyone will notice they're not in Europe. Maybe we should start a Lederhosen overall exchange program. So in 1969, they passed a law that made it mandatory to have a Bavarian theme in any new building. Since it's in Georgia, they also passed a law that required all the residents known as Haas or Bubba to change their name to Hans or Klaus. Kind of a nice little pivot there. This town is nestled on the banks of the Chattahoochee River. Helen is a charming Bavarian style town known for its festivals, outdoor activities, and scenic beauty. It's like I said, it's in the Blue Ridge Mountains and it's really hard to go wrong finding a town there. Now they do have some little villages and burgs that are uh, little backwoods, but the people are decent. Helen is a beautiful river town. And if you could move there, I'd suggest it. It's like the best of both worlds. It's a river town and you're in the mountains. This is pretty much a resort town. So if you want to buy some property there, it's probably going to be a little expensive, but they do have some that right now are going for about $430,000 that are nice and livable. The average home value in Helen is $362,000. That's because they have some rundown ones and then they have some nice ones. Bring it all on an average and it comes up to $362,000. Definitely not a bad place to live. Number nine, Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque, Iowa is a very beautiful place to live. It sits right on the Mississippi River. This city is situated at the meeting point of Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. The region is often referred to as the tri-state area, and it plays a crucial role as a central hub of commerce, industry, education, and culture for this region. In terms of geography, it's located what they call the driftless area that is part of North America that remains unaffected by the three stages of the Wisconsin glacial area episode. Yes, it's a thing. They had glaciers up there. Dubuque also sits east of the Field of Dreams location. You could still go visit that place from the movie, The Field of Dreams. They built a set on a farm. It's still there. People go by there all the time. They hold like youth tournaments there in baseball. It's great. If you've never seen that movie. I suggest you see it. It's a great movie. Great for the whole family to watch. You don't even have to be a baseball fan. I've been through Dubuque a few times and it is a beautiful town. The people are wonderful, plenty of things to do. Now, it's been a handful of years since I've been there. I think I was there last in 2014. If you go visit here, they've got the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium, which is pretty cool. They also have a casino there. I don't know, I've just always been a big fan of this city. I'd like to go back, but the guy I know that used to live near there, he doesn't live there anymore, so no real point unless I, uh, I don't know, just decide to someday. Back in the old days when I used to travel all around as a comedian, I had friends from the army all over the country, and I would always just stop by their place and stay for a couple days. Saved a hell of a lot of money on hotel rooms. This town is also known for its picturesque bluffs and the scenic views of the Mississippi River. They've got a great downtown, riverboat casinos besides their Q Casino. There is plenty to do here. So it's not really a town, river town. It's a river city, but it's really not that big. 
If you want to buy a home here, the medium home value is about $214,000. Poking around on Zillow, you could buy older homes here for under $200,000, under $150,000. They're going to need some work, but you can get in there and get a home. The nicer ones are going to be just a little north of $300,000, and they go all the way up into, there's a few here for like $900,000. Number eight, Natchez, Mississippi. Natchez stands proudly as the historical birthplace of the great state of Mississippi, and its reputation extends far beyond the boundaries of the South, gaining international acclaim as a picturesque and very much a traditional Southern town. What sets Natchez apart from the rest of Mississippi, I mean, this is like a gem of Mississippi. It's the landscape, it's the history, and it's the many cultures of Natchez. Now, this was very much a river town throughout its history. Obviously, the river's right there, And back in the day, they didn't have a lot of trains. They didn't have a lot of semi-trucks moving goods around. So everyone went by the river. This was a very important trade port. So this town was basically founded by Africans, French, British, and Spanish. Spanish. The town is nestled alongside the Mississippi River and boasts a tapestry of traditions, customs, and flavors that reflect the multicultural past. I didn't know about their music history much years ago, and I was talking to a man who grew up in New Orleans. We used to talk all the time. We worked together. And he told me once that if you want to hear some real jazz and some real blues, you go to Natchez. I don't know how true that is. That's just what he said. I do know they have a long history of jazz and blues. Now, if you go here, it's not just the music. You could see the French heritage of Natchez dating all the way back to the colonial days. It's alive in its architecture and its historic buildings. The French-inspired cuisine is also a big thing here. Now, if you want to move here and buy a home, their average home value is very deceiving here in Natchez. They say it's $110,000. Well, $110,000 isn't going to get you much. And they have a lot of homes that are like 75,000, 100,000 that need a lot of work. But as you get close to the river and you get some of those, you know, nicely built buildings, the colonial style ones, those start getting into the millions. Realistically, if you want to move here and buy a decent house that's ready to go, you're looking at about $320,000 and on up. Number seven, Stillwater, Minnesota. Stillwater, Minnesota sits about 30 minutes east from Minneapolis on the St. Croix River, right across from Wisconsin. Now, Stillwater is just one of a bunch of really cool small river towns in this area. Well, they're not terribly small, but there's a bunch of smaller river towns up and down the St. Croix River that are amazing. Taylor's Falls and St. Croix Falls are pretty cool too. They're up river a little bit. But we're talking about Stillwater. During the 1830s, people of European American descent were moving further west into this region. The U.S. government attempted to facilitate their establishment in the area traditionally inhabited by Native American communities. On July 29th and September 29th of 1837, the government entered into agreements with the local tribes, granting permission for European American settlements in the LaCroix Valley, in the St. Croix Valley. Those damn drinks making me call this place LaCroix. The actual founding of the settlement, which would become Stillwater, was on October 26th, 1843, when four individuals joined forces to establish the Stillwater Lumber Company. So this was a lumber place, and a lot of lumber was shipped down river, and that usually how things spring up. The river and some form of commerce means human beings start popping up like mushrooms in a foggy field. Stillwater's a beautiful little town. If you can handle the Minnesota winters, it's a great place to live. And when I tell you survive, that's literally a thing. If you're not from this part of the country, make sure you kind of talk to the locals on how to deal with things. And ladies, a lot of sweaters, thick sweaters. Stillwater's a little expensive if you want to buy a home here. The average home value in Stillwater is $414,000. Decent livable homes start around three hundred and fifty, dollars in my opinion. You could find fixer-uppers for $250,000 down to, there's one right now that looks like a shed in the woods for $200,000. Number six, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. If you want to irritate the locals, call it Portsmouth. Tilt their head like they're uncomfortable when you say it that way. Same way I look at people when they put ketchup in potato chip bags. Portsmouth is a charming city located on the banks of the Piscataqua River in New Hampshire and is steeped in history and brimming with notable attractions. Among its historical treasures are several well-preserved 17th and 18th century houses, many of which are within a museum. Visitors have unique opportunities to step 
step back in time as costume staff demonstrate traditional crafts and provide a glimpse into the daily life of early settlers of this part of the country. If you've never been to New Hampshire or even Vermont, they're very similar in my opinion. I know the locals will argue that they're very vastly different. They're totally different. I don't see how you could say it. You know, they are a little bit different, but we're not talking Arizona, Minnesota different, okay? These are both beautiful states. And Portsmouth is a place that, I don't know, it just seems like it should be in a romantic comedy. I've said that about places in New Hampshire before. That's what it always reminds me of. Downtown Portsmouth, you will find the North Church. This church was built in 1657, rebuilt in 1854, and then restored in 1978. It's beautiful. It's very much one of those things that you've seen many times in photographs, but you don't know where it is. This is where it is. And it kind of sits there as a beacon over the Market Square. You know, as I'm making this video, I'm just looking at New Hampshire going, why don't I live here? Well, I mean, my wife won't let me. That's one reason. But why don't I live here? I mean, she has some pretty serious rules about me moving other places without her. Anyway, Portsmouth, there's a ton of things to see. You also have the USS Albacore there, which is a submarine, and you can go there and check it out. You can actually go inside the submarine. They have one of those here in uh, Portland, too. I've been in it. I was an Army guy, and there's no way I would have ever lived in a submarine. Imagine you and 50 dudes living in a hallway together. If you want to live in Portsmouth, I found out why I don't live there. The average home value here is $669,000. That's the average. If you could find anything here under 600000 it's going to be a teardown. But it is beautiful, and if you can afford it, why not? Again, though, it's New England. You're going to get cold. Number five, Hood River, Oregon. Hood River is situated in Hood River County, Oregon. This is a great little city nestled along the banks of the Columbia River, taking its name from the adjacent Hood River, which flows into the Columbia River. According to the latest data from 2020, from the 2020 census, Hood River boasts a population of about 8,300 residents. I've been here several times. It is a great place to hang out. Good food, good breweries, plenty of things to see and do. They've got a nice little uh, hotel and spa just on the outskirts of town, but this is a popular destination for tourists and outdoor enthusiasts. The river and the surrounding landscape plays a crucial role in the city's identity and its economy. It's okay, so they grow a lot of fruit around here, and the climate this area is like perfect for it. It's kind of earned the nickname the Fruit Loop, which you know I think that's kind of entertaining. Windsurfing was I think invented here. I've I've seen that was invented a couple places, but it really got big right here at Hood River, and now kiteboarding too. But the town is also the gateway to the Columbia River Gorge, and it's known for its waterfalls and hiking trails. If you're gonna visit any place in the let's say northern Oregon area near Portland. Definitely go see Hood River. Hood River is a little bit expensive. It's right there in a beautiful part of Oregon, so yeah, it's going to be expensive. The average home value in Hood River is $686,000. Most of the nicer homes are going to be $800,000 and above. I mean, they've got quite a few that are just over a million, 1.3, 1.2, things like that. You can find some that are in the six hundred dollars to 500000 area, but they're probably going to need some work, and they're about 50 years old, I bet. The other cool thing is they're far enough away from Portland where you don't have to worry about getting that Portland nonsense in your daily life. I still love Portland. Number four, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga is a vibrant city nestled in the southeastern region of Tennessee, and it is in a perfect location beside the meandering Tennessee River. This is another town that is sitting in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. The city offers a rich tapestry of natural beauty and historical significance. Chattanooga is a city that's kind of turning it around. They've had some crime in the past. I mean, their crime rate's still kind of there, but it's not terrible. It is definitely a city that's on the upswing right now, in my opinion, and the entire area around here is just beautiful. One of Chattanooga's iconic attractions is the Incline Railway. This is like a charming little trolley that embarks on a thrilling journey up the imposing Lookout Mountain. Interesting story about this Incline Railway, the Incline's manager is named Matthew Higgins. Matthew Higgins grew stone's throw from the Incline, like he could see the Incline tracks from his mom's house growing up. When he was like a teenager, one of the conductors offered him a job to start working there. He was the night cleanup guy, and now he runs the whole thing. Perched on top of Lookout Mountain is Point Park. It's a historical site that carries the weight of the past within its boundaries. This was the site of a battle during the Civil War. If you want to learn all about that while you're in Chattanooga, you can go to the 
Battles of Chattanooga Museum. But Chattanooga has a nice blend of natural beauty, historical significance, and tourism. And it's not a bad place to live. Chattanooga's Riverfront District is known for its outdoor attractions, including Rock City, Ruby Falls, and like I said, the Incline Railway. The revitalization of downtown features restaurants, art galleries, and the Tennessee Aquarium. This has kind of been a place for tech startups too in recent years. There's been quite a few. If you want to move here, the average home value in Chattanooga, Tennessee is $288,000. I poked around Zillow and you can find something for every budget. Just got to make sure you're not moving in the worst neighborhood, but I saw okay homes for $250,000 and they got some for around $800,000 that are freaking beautiful. Number three, St. Augustine, Florida. St. Augustine just isn't a river town. It's also a coastal town. They have two rivers that meet here before they go into the ocean. One is the San Sebastian River. The other is the Matanzas River. I love St. Augustine, the rivers, the ocean there. It's a great place to be around. In recent years, a lot of businesses are opening up along the San Sebastian River. A lot of the businesses and a lot of things do will stay downtown in the historic districts. But it's like they're revitalizing along the river. It's really neat. A lot of history around this area. But the historic district of St. Augustine is a versatile treasure trove of Spanish colonial architecture and rich historical sites that offer a glimpse of the past. There's, I'm telling you, there's too much to talk about here. You've got the Castillo de San Marcos Fortress, which is a national monument. You got the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park, where they actually thought the Fountain of Youth was here. Have a couple drinks. You're 21 again. You're hanging out at college bars, talking to ladies that have no idea who the Rolling Stones are. And can't believe it when you tell them there once was no internet. I'll just stay old, thanks. St. Augustine is a great city to visit. I mean, plenty of things to do, plenty of things to see. A lot of local galleries, theaters, contemporary artists and performing artists everywhere. Great beaches. Expensive, though. Even though it is Florida, which is relatively inexpensive compared to most popular states, you get a great city like St. Augustine and it gets a little expensive. If you want to move here and buy a home in St. Augustine, Florida, the average home value is about $452,000. Now, I looked around. It is expensive, but the further you go away from the water, I mean a half a mile, mile, it gets pretty affordable. You can find nice older homes that are small for about $260,000 but they're all over the map. So it's really hard to define what's a good price here, what's a bad price. But if you want something really nice, kind of close to the water, you're looking at roughly a million dollars on up. Number two, Hannibal, Missouri. When was the last time we talked about Hannibal? It's a trick question. We've never talked about Hannibal, Missouri. I don't think anyone ever has, unless you live there. It's not a very popular place to live, but it's not terrible. Most people know Hannibal, Missouri from Mark Twain. This is his boyhood home, Samuel Clements. They also have a cave complex here, which is kind of the inspiration for a lot of his stories. They got the Mark Twain River Boat, which you can take trips on. If you ever decide you want to go here and visit and, you know, see the things that Mark Twain saw or Samuel Clements saw, don't get your hopes up. He was a young man here over 150 years ago. You go here now and you're like, I don't remember Mark Twain talking about a Boost Mobile or a Best Western. A couple things you will find are the childhood homes of some of the people from his books like Huckleberry Finn. If you're not looking for some kind of tropical island type river, this is a great place to live. It's very much middle America, nice Midwestern town with a whole bunch of history. The good news is if you want to live in Hannibal, Missouri, the average home value is about $139,000. That is not bad. They've got low cost living, their housing's low, their crime rate, it's not great, but it's definitely not terrible. It's 27% above the national average. That's not terrible at all. Their schools get decent numbers, their health and safety get decent numbers, and their poverty level's not bad either. So yeah, that's kind of strange for Missouri. Usually it's pretty high. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to any one of these cities or any place in the United States, there's a link for a website called Home and Money. They can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. They also have a bunch of other tools on the website to help you with the finding and buying a home process. All right, on to number one. And 
And number one, Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia is a great place to live. It's a great place to visit. And it's got a lot of really cool history, including pirate history. Yes, Blackbeard the pirate used to come up the Savannah River. According to legend, Blackbeard buried a chest of gold and jewels somewhere in the Savannah area, possibly near the Savannah River. Pirates would also kidnap people using underground tunnels that led from a restaurant to the Savannah River. They used to call this Shanghaiing someone. You get them drunk, you knock them out. Next thing they know, they wake up, they're on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Their choice is work or swim. There's rumors of that going on here in Portland, Oregon too. There's supposedly ghosts on River Street, and of course, legends and stories of the musk ape. Do you know what the musk ape is? He's basically Bigfoot that lives in a swamp. There's been rumors and stories going on around the Savannah area about the musk ape for decades and decades. I made a joke about how they've never been able to catch a Bigfoot up in the Washington area, and there's guys out in the woods all the time looking for him. Some guy very seriously said it's because he's psychic and he could teleport. Okay, so now we've got a giant ape that runs through the Washington woods and he's got psychic powers and apparently a teleportation machine. It's like the stories just keep climbing with this creature. Next thing you know, we'll find out he owns a bunch of Bitcoin. Savannah, Georgia, in my opinion, is the best river city we have in this country. What's your favorite? Let me know in the comment section. If you want to live in Savannah, the average home value is about $298,000. Now, that's a little misleading. They got a lot of areas inland from the coast and away from the river that aren't really that great. But in the really nice areas, you're looking at eight hundred. dollars $900,000. Just by poking around on Zillow, you could probably find something decent around $325,000 on up. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.